Hello everybody and welcome back to the To Be Like Christ 5 Minute Bible Study Series. Today we are talking about 2 Samuel chapter 10 in 5 minutes. 2 Samuel chapter 10, free PDF handout. There's a link down in the description if you want it. When did the events of chapter 10 happen? The same time as all the other chapters we discuss in this um, <laughs> in this book. <laughs> so David became the king of Judah around 1055 BC. He would eventually become the king of Judah and Israel, and his total reign would be approximately 40 years. Who are the key characters of chapter 10? First, we have a guy named Hanun, Han Hanun, king of the Ammonites. He took the throne after, after the death of his father, Nahash. We've got David, who of course we know by now, Joab, the commander of David's army, then a guy named Hadad Ezer. He was the king of Zobah. Most historians think that Zobah was somewhere in the territory of Syria, which you'll see on the map in a second. And then a guy named Shobek, the commander of Hadad Ezer's army. We've already mentioned the region of Syria on the map. Now let's talk about the other locations. The Ammonites lived on the east side of the Jordan River. You'll see their territory listed there to the uh, on the, the right side of the Dead Sea. The Israelites appear to have fought the Ammonites and the Syrians around Medaba, based on 1 Chronicles 19, verse 7. Medaba is right over there by Ammon. And then finally, the Israelites fought the army of Hadad-Ezer at Halim, which I think the location is debated, but you'll see it to the right of this, the Sea of Galilee. 19 total verses in chapter 10, and the first five are first section. The Ammonites shame David's servants. So Nahash, who'd been the king of Ammon, he died, and he was replaced by his son, this guy named Hanun. Nahash had been an ally of David's, so David sent messengers to Hanun to console him over the death of his father. But Hanun's advisors convinced him that David's messengers who were coming to console him were actually spies because they had intention on his lands. So Hanun listened to them, unfortunately. He shamed David's messengers by cutting off half of their beards, half of their clothing, and then sending them back to David. David's response to this is recorded in section 2, verses 6 through 14. Joab leads Israel's army against the Ammonites and the Syrians. So David was so offended that he brought his army out against the Ammonites. The Ammonites realized they were kind of in trouble. They hired 33,000 men, many of which were Syrians, to fight the Israelites. Joab and his brother, named Abishai, led the army of Israel against their enemies, and God gave them victory over the Ammonites and the Syrians. The Ammonites and the Syrians fled, and then the Israelites returned home. The chapter concludes with verses 14 through 19, another battle. Israel fights the Syrians again at a place called Hel Helam. The Syrians, after their defeat, regroup their army under the command of a guy named Hadad Ezer and his commander Shobak. David met them again for battle at this place called Halam, and once again, the Israelites defeated the Syrians, killing the men of 700 chariots and 40,000 horsemen. Shobak, the general of the enemy army, was mortally wounded on the battlefield. Hadad Ezer's men were then forced to surrender and to become the servants of the Israelites. So again, we have another chapter of kind of the rising power and influence of the kingdom of Israel under David during this time. And now finally for our application, if you've read the chapter, you came across verse 12. Joab encouraged his men before the battle saying, quote, be of good courage and let us be courageous for our people and for the cities of our God, and may the Lord do what seems good to him. Joab rallied his men to fight courageously. He wanted them to fight courageously and bravely. However, he also acknowledged that it was God who was ultimately going to decide the outcome of the battle. The application for us is it's right and it's good to work hard towards the outcomes that we would like to see. But we always have to remember that there is more to the equation than just our personal effort. Human effort isn't the most powerful force at work in the universe.